when, when we start talking about drawing from the holster, I always like to break it down into a step draw. Let me explain why, okay? There are multiple reasons why we teach things by the steps. Um, I have heard uh, there are people Three, out there that's like, ah, you don't need four. to do that. Uh, but there are important so reasons. The first one is from an adult learning standpoint, when you break things down by the steps, it's called chunking. You're chunking information together. So if I just try to tell you everything you need to do, your absorption level goes down. If I chunk it into pieces, you're much more likely to understand and be able to put those pieces together, okay? So that's the reason Three, law enforcement, one, military, a lot of guys teach two, certain three, things and four. in a stepped movement. Number two, as an instructor, if I'm standing back looking at 15, 16 people, or even as an instructor and I've got three or four people on the line, if you guys are all doing the same thing at the same time, it's very difficult for me to analyze who's making mistakes and when. Okay. Whereas if I do things by the steps, I can stand back or off to the side and go ready one. And then I can look around and make sure everybody did what they should have done for step one and step two, and then look down the line and make sure everybody did what they should have done at that point. Okay. So there is more to it than just simplifying it and chunking it. It helps from the, for the instructor's comprehension of what the student's doing as well. So drawing the gun from the holster, we break this down into four steps. Uh, you could break it down into more or less. Four seems to be a nice middle ground uh, that I tend to have been sticking with for a really long time now. So on step one, regardless of where my hands are, both of my hands are gonna move together. My support hand is gonna go somewhere here in the middle of my chest about where it's gonna meet up with the gun. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be in any kind of cupped configuration or any of that kind of stuff, uh, but I don't want it playing catch up from down here somewhere. Because once the gun starts moving, it's moving really, really fast. So I want it to be about here, okay? One of the nice things of a Penix draw is that's kind of where it normally ends up anyway, okay? The other hand is gonna go to the gun. If I have a retention device, at this point, the retention device is gonna go off, okay? I'm gonna disengage the hood or the ALS or whatever needs to happen there, I'm gonna do that at this point. I wanna, as much as possible, I want the same grip in the holster as I have at the end of the presentation. So I wanna try to get a full solid grip on the gun. If you're drawing for, from concealment, that might tweak a little bit because your thumb may be in a little bit different of a spot, but we don't wanna have to re-grip the gun as we're presenting it towards the target. Okay, we want a full, as close to a full grip on the gun as possible. All right, so that's step one again. Both hands move together, retention device is off, full grip in the holster. For you guys that are drawn from behind the hip, it doesn't really matter from where, but I highly advise that you come slightly from behind when you're coming down on the gun. By coming slightly from behind, it helps you drive your hand up high on the gun to get that really high grip that we're looking for. Okay, on step two, the gun is gonna come straight up out of the holster and rotate at the wrist when we're talking about a strong side holster, okay? So I don't, I don't wanna start lifting the elbow and doing all crazy stuff. I want the gun to come straight up and rotate. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is if this is any kind of retention holster, it increases the smoothness of how you draw, especially a duty rig that does not have um, a leg strap or something on it. If you get slightly off and start drawing, the older ones bind really badly. So by coming straight up, the chances of the gun binding in the holster is dramatically reduced. The other thing by coming straight up and rotating at the wrist, it kind of helps prevent the tendency for me to want to start bowling that presentation. If I get the gun up high quickly, it helps me drive it up and get it to the line of sight sooner, okay? So up and rotate at the wrist. On step three, my hands are gonna come together and I'm gonna get what I call a touch index, all right? It's not what I call a touch index, meaning my finger is gonna hit the trigger guard and gonna give me a, a location of where it needs to be. I'm not gonna be able to, or it's gonna be very difficult for me to get a correct grip at this point because my hands are too close here. So I'm gonna, I'd have to hyper compress to try to get this grip. I'm gonna turn around a little bit so you guys can see me here. 
but my hand is still loose at this point. And so as I present the gun, I'm able to rotate and complete that grip on the way out to the target. So touch index, that's all I really got to do here at step three. And then at step four, I'm doing exactly what we just did. Move the gun, find the sight, break the shot as I present it towards the target. Okay, so again, ready. One, both hands move together. Two, up and rotate. Three, touch index. And four, drive straight for the target and break the shot. Three things that I think are important that you are able to do from a appendix draw. One is a bottom of the garment draw, okay? don't have to be able to do it but depending on the clothing you're wearing that may be the right way for you to pull it up so if you've got a jacket or multiple multiple layers and stuff that may end up being what you have to do in order to get it out of there so meaning i'm grabbing my support hand grabbing the garment and pulling it all out of the way so that i can access my gun the other thing is my preferred method to draw is to grab my shirt with my hand and pull the whole thing up and out of the way I think that's the fastest and the most consistent because it takes away the inconsistencies of different lengths of garments. And then finally, you need to be able to draw with only one hand, okay? This other hand may be occupied, so you need to be able to sweep that garment and draw one-handed very efficiently. The biggest thing that I'm gonna talk about on appendix carry is it turns to into really a three-step draw, okay? There's no real other, because the garment comes out, I got my grip, as soon as I draw the gun out, I'm just gonna go to step three. There's no real reason for an up and rotate and stop. As soon as the gun clears leather, I let go of that uh, garment and I'm gonna come to that step three position and then I present the gun. So it's a three step draw, there's all there is to it. The other reason I wanna talk about appendix very quickly um, is that reholstering obviously is the critical situation there. We've got to be cautious of how Back we reholster steps. that gun Holster. to ensure that that muzzle is not covering any part of our Two. body. We want to make sure that um, if the gun were Search to fire, okay, ready. which it should Recock not, if but if the gun were to fire, I'm going to just blow a hole in the front of my pants and nothing is going to get injured on the way. So making sure that that dominant leg is back and out of the way and nothing is in the way of the gun when I reholster. Also, I should be reholstering that gun very gingerly. There should be no jamming the gun back down into the holster. All it takes, if you've got a striker fired gun with a nice trigger on it, is a piece of t-shirt to get into that trigger guard and that gun goes bang. So we have to be very, very cautious when we're reholstering. By the way, this is not just an appendix carry issue. I have seen people do horrible things with strong side holsters because they'll come and they'll start trying to fish the gun into the holster on their belt and now they're pointing the gun cross pelvis across their body. Same thing here. If you've got a strong side holster and you're reholstering, you need to make sure that everything underneath it is clear because I would argue that a cross pelvis shot is probably just as bad as a groin shot. Okay, Lots of arterial stuff going on in here. So be very careful when you're reholstering the gun. To keep up to date, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. For questions, go to langdontactical.com. And to keep up to date with all the new stuff from Langdon Tactical, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Langdon Tactical.